probably one of the most important chapters in the Bible is the third chapter of Genesis. And why do I say that? Well, because it is the account of the fall. <laughs> That's what brought about this curse on the earth. That's what brought about sin and the depravity of man. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Notice who made the subtle beast of the field. Notice who made the subtle beast of the field. According to Scripture, the Lord God made the subtle beast of the field. A lot of people say, oh, God didn't make, you know, Satan just became evil. Well, it says here, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Notice how Satan started out with a universal question. Did God say you shouldn't eat of the tree of the garden? He knew that they weren't supposed to eat of the tree in the midst of the garden, but he said, Shall you eat, can you eat of the tree of the garden? And she said, God has said you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. He called God a liar right there. The Satan called God a liar. And the Bible says he was a liar from the beginning, and he abode not in the truth. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took to the fruit and did eat and give also unto her husband with her and he did eat so she bought into the lies of Satan he said God knows that in the day you eat then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods knowing good and evil and so she bought into Satan's lies didn't she there's a lot of people buying into Satan's lies today. What what lies are they buying into today? Well, the biggest lie of all times is they're buying into the lie of free will. You can determine your own destiny. You can make your own choices. You can, can become anything you want to be. And on and on it goes. And where it stops, nobody knows. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked and sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. That's what Arminianism does. It sews fig leaves together and makes themselves aprons and gives people the idea that they they can do something to to bring God into their lives. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Uh, it wasn't that God didn't know where Adam was. He knew right where he was. But he was calling Adam out for what he'd done. And he, Adam, said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And God, he, God, said, Who told thee thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I command thee that thou shouldst not eat? And Adam, the man, Adam, said, The woman whom thou gavest to me be with me. She gave me of the tree that I did eat. Trying to blame the woman, wasn't he? And the Lord said, God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. She, she blamed it. Even, you know, it's true that, that the serpent did beguile her. I mean, he was the only, he was the most subtle beast of the field that God had made. And he did beguile her. And I did eat. And 
And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thy dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. God has put enmity between Satan and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, and thy conception in sorrow, and thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Well, ever since that has been told, the women have decided they're not going to have their men to rule over them. They're going to try to take things in their own hands. And that's why we have feminazism today, is it not? And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and thou hast eaten of the tree of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Like I said, this is a very important chapter in the Bible because it tells the fall of man and the curse of the earth. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field, and the sweat of thy brow shalt thou eat bread till thou return into the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto death dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Notice there that that is absolute proof that there's no other humans on any other planet. Because it says she was the mother of all living. She did not uh, really give give life to any other aliens or any other offspring from other planets. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord make coats of skins and clothe them. And the Lord said, Behold, a man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man at the place of the east of the garden of Eden, cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Well, we're still living with the results of Adam and Eve's sin in the Garden of Eden today. And there are numerous scriptures that tell us that all men are born and conceived in sin, do they not? So today we have the results of man and woman's disobedience to God by partaking of the tree in the midst of the garden and the fact that they were that Eve was beguiled by Satan and Adam was beguiled by Eve and Satan is still alive today so I'm going to turn this over to Mark and have him read this and um, as he as he reads this I'd like for you to think about what do we have to live with today because of this third chapter of Genesis account? What do we have to contend with today? All kinds of evil. Murders. Rapes. Pedophiles. Felic behavior. Idolatry. Thievery. Lying. Cheating. And every imaginable sin. But we have a remedy in Christ Jesus who came to save sinners. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden. The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, of the fruit of the tree which is midst of the garden. God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. You shall be as gods, 
knowing good and evil, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to eyes and tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also and her husband with her and he did eat and eyes of them both were open. They knew that they were naked and they sewed big piece together and made themselves aprons. They heard the voice of the Lord God walk in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. The Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. And he said, He told that thou was naked, hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat. And the man said, The woman who thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. The Lord God said, The woman, what this, this that thou hast done? The woman said, The serpent galled me, and I did eat. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above Every beast of the field upon my belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The woman who said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be thy husband. He shall rule over thee. And to Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and eaten the tree of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt eat of it, cursed the ground for thy sake. And sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shalt bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. Sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return to the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was a mother of all living, and Adam also and his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin to clothe them. Lord God said, Behold, the man has come because he becomes one of us to know good and evil now. Must he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life, and he will live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, he placed the east of the garden of Eden, cherubims, and the flaming sword was turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. <clears throat> well, the next time you pick a rose and get pricked by a thorn bush, you'll know why. <laughs> and the good Lord be with you today is my prayer. God bless.